Wait a second. Wait till I stop talking. What's up? Oh, Ari, we're there already. And that's your last thing. Two uh, tea lights, like a shot. Who's not sleeping? Okay, we're getting ready. We're going to start Havdalah. So as we finish another Shabbos, a beautiful Shabbos, we are ready to take all the beautiful energy we took from Shabbos into the weekday, especially now we're going into the first full week of the three weeks of mourning. We need extra strength to be able to turn over, turn around the negativity of these three weeks of the Chorban destruction, the rebuilding. Everyone's hands ready? Da 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 da
We now take our blessing for the week for wisdom, for inspiration, for Panasa, for all the things that we uh, we know we need, the things we're not even sure we need. Sham should give us all to have a Shavuot Tov, a good week and all of the blessings in the fullest and complete way. Just to make a bracha chroin, and then we'll go to a story. So, we're sitting with the two candles for the Shabbat. Brother sitting in front of us as the typical Havdalah and Mlava Malka. So, the story I want to share today, tonight, as we are in the period of the three weeks, and we know that the three weeks is a time of sadness. It's the three weeks when we we, we mourning the Beis Hamikdash, the destruction of the Temple, and the hard time that we had the structure of the first Temple, the second Temple, losing our our crown jewels, and the whole idea of us marking the three weeks now, starting with the 17th of Tammuz last Thursday and ending with the Tisha B'av, the two fast days, is because we we're trying to transform these two days. And this whole period into a rebuilding and renewal of the Beis Hamikdash to bring the third Beis Hamikdash. And how do we approach this? These three weeks is it with crying and sadness. On one hand, we mourn. We don't do weddings. We don't listen to music. The many things we don't do to to help us uh, feel what we are missing. But at the same time, we approach it with positivity. We approach it. We approach it with a certain level of of uh, faith, strength of faith, and confidence in Hashem. And especially when we're in Shabbos, there's a lot of simcha. There's extra joy because through emphasizing the positive, we're able to overcome the negative. So the story I want to bring today is a story that happened during the Second World War, and it's really about having that strength of uh, faith and being positive and even being able to sing a song. Maybe we don't listen to music with the instruments, but singing songs is always good. A nigun, a, a, it's uplifting, and this is the time we need it more than ever. So this is a story that goes during the Second World War with Rab Shmolka, Rab Shmolka, who was the rabbi of Zabalov. Zabalov was a town in Eastern Europe 
Poland. And this Reb Shmolka was a very, very holy man. He led, his community. he led his community. He led his community completely and fully with Torah and good deeds. But beyond being, and, uh, and, and, and he studied Torah himself all day long and he was leading his community, but beyond that, there was something about him and he was known as the fiddler, the Jewish fiddler, because he had a violin. Someone gave him a violin and he turned that violin into something that he helped to uplift all his people's spirits. And it was very special in that town where there was a celebration, a simcha, bar mitzvah, a wedding. The Rav would take his violin out and play a nigan. When he played a nigan, everyone's hearts melted. It was empowering. It was deep. It was soulful. It was very, very powerful. And this is how he led his community for many years. Then came the Second World War, the Nazis. And the Nazis overran his country, Poland. And many of them were forced into ghettos first, then from there taken to camps. But of Schmolke, with the small group of his town, was able to run into the forest and escape the Nazis. And so it happened for two years that he led his group in the forest with constantly building up their faith in Hashem that will make through it and will overcome and we will, he will protect us and we shouldn't feel helpless. We shouldn't feel like it's all over. And whenever he felt people were feeling scared and weak, he would take out his violin and he would play a song on his violin. And when he played, he used to soothe everyone to rebuild their spirit. And this is how he led his group of partisans. We all heard of partisans. Ashmoka was a partisan with his group. To many, it would seem ridiculous that the rabbi, the only thing that he kept close to him all the time was his talus and tefillin, his sitter, one or two other books, and his violin. But he never wanted anyone to touch his violin. This violin, he says, is as important to him as his talus and tefillin. And he used it to help bring up the spirits whenever he needed to. During the two years that they were on the run, they met up with another group. And this other group of Jews joined them. He was happy they were able to join him. But as there were more people now to feed, to look after, as it was getting close to the next winter, he realized that they don't have enough food. They don't even have enough blankets. They don't have enough for the winter. So he called his people together. It was a few weeks before Hanukkah. And he said, people, we don't have enough. We need to go get some stuff. I'm going. I need two volunteers who want to come and uh, help me. So they said, Rebbe, you can't go. If the Nazis catch any one of us, they'll, they'll have a party. If they catch our rabbi, forget about it. What are they going to do to you? You can't go, Rebbe, you can't go. And he said, no, I'm determined I'm going. Who wants to come with me? So two people volunteered. He left his deputy to be in charge, and he left. Right after he left, in the group that, that, that uh, joined them, there was one fellow who was a bit of a troublemaker, Yassel the Smith. He was a bit of a troublemaker. He was always getting into some kind of trouble. He was a liability. And all of a sudden, Yassel gets up and says, I'm going to follow the rabbi. I don't know. The rabbi is going to get us food and stuff. Why did he take his violin? I think he's running away. He's going to let us die. I want to follow the rabbi. And they try to dissuade him. But he said, no, he said, who's going to join me? And two people joined him. And he went to look at, to search for the rabbi. A few days passed by uneventfully. And then they hear some noise. And one of the people who went with Yasso comes back distraught. And he says, so he said, well, what's going on? They said, I don't know what you're thinking. But we, I went with Yasso, we made it to the town the closest town, and we're looking for where the Shmulk is. And then we find him in a tavern playing violin, surrounded by Nazis who are drinking and, and partying and dancing, and he's playing violin. 
I don't know what's going on. And he said, you know, Yossel and I got some food. We started to head back. Then Nazis saw us. So we dropped all of our stuff and we ran. I don't know where Yossel is. I don't know where he went. He's, uh, I, I came running back as fast as I said, I don't know where he is. So now that we're really worried, Nazis saw someone running. Maybe they're going to catch us. They got very, very nervous. But they said, if the Rebbe doesn't tell us to leave, we can't leave. Anyway, they're discussing a day later, they hear bristling in the, in the trees and someone comes in, one of the people that went with the Rebbe. They said, what's going on? What's going on? So he said, the Rebbe knows exactly that Yossel ran after him and he knows what's going on. And he said that we have to move. We have to leave, pack your bags and leave right away near the Hungarian border. There's a cave. We're going to go to that cave and he'll be back for Hanukkah. Because he promised them before he left, he played to them Ma'oz Tzur with his violin. He promised them, I'll be back to play Hanukkah night. They were nervous. Will he make it back? Won't he make it back? Is it easy to move? They were a bigger group now, but the Rebbe said move. They started to move. And they had some terrible incidents along the way. Once a bloodhound, a dog that the Nazis sent to smell any people were there, found them. Luckily, they gave him a piece of poison. The dog uh, died, but they knew that the Nazis would figure out something is wrong. They kept on going on the move. And finally, they came to the cave area. They came to the cave area, and they are, they're there at the cave area, and all of a sudden, they start hearing dogs barking, shooting. They hear a group of Nazis are not far. They get worried. They say, oh, this is our end. This is it. This is where it's going to finish, ah? Huh? It's, it's our lives are over. But then all of a sudden they heard quiet. And they heard the sound of a fiddle, but the sound of the, the, the violin was playing. And then another bark, and then it's quiet again. But what's going on? What's happening? So they're sitting quietly waiting, and then soon if Shmelka comes in. Shmelka comes in with the guy they sent Yassel to, to look and to find him. The Shmelka comes in and he says, Hashem made a, 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 our own Hanukkah miracle. When I was coming back, I saw all these Nazis there and I heard the voices. So I started to play violin and they love music like I did in the tavern when I went there. I saw Nazis all around. So I brought in my, I started to play violin. They loved it. And then they brought the, the and, and, and then they danced around when my people went and got food and stuff. So here also, started to play violin. Before long, they all heard the violin. They came towards the violin and they started to dance. He said, you want to hear more? They said, yeah. He said, but we can't play if we don't have anything to drink. Let's go to the closest tavern. So he said, I took them away. And they took them to the tavern, they got drunk, and then I ran away. And now I'm here with you back together again. The night of the first night of Hanukkah, let's light the menorah. And this is the faith that we are called for today. When we had the Beis Amigdash, we had the song of Hashem. We had the, our violin was playing. The song of Hashem was playing. But all of a sudden, we miss it. We're sad. We don't have the Kedusha, the holiness, the beauty of the Beis Amigdash. But if we start playing our own violin, we start when we do a mitzvah, we do it with joy. We feel our closeness to Hashem. As long as we start playing our own violin, God willing, that will help. And not only help us overcome our difficulties and our challenges, but more importantly, it will help usher in very soon. The real song, like the Bashanta said, that the, uh, the world is Hashem's music. And we'll all be able to hear Hashem's music playing through the Beis Hamikdash, and all of the Jewish people being together and doing all the 613 mitzvahs fully and completely. And not only will we hear the violin, but the whole world, like we read in the Aftar, the whole world will hear the violin and will come together to serve Hashem. May Mashiach's coming happen very quickly in our days. Amen. Amen. So we'll finish off by singing. Eliyahu Hanavi, Eliyahu Hatishbi, Eliyahu.